In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a basic rebuild on an S300 series. This is a Borg Warner S366 turbo for a 96 Dodge Cummins. It's an upgrade. So first off, we prepared everything by balancing the assembly and we used our 360 degree rebuild kit. So if you want to purchase that rebuild kit, the same one that we use, I will link to that in the description box. If you want us to balance your assembly, we can also do that as a service. I do machine out the bearing housings for this compressor housing o-ring for our rebuilds. If you wanted to do that for your turbo, it would you'd have to either send it to us or to somebody that could do that work for you. The bearing housing has to be machined for the o-ring because it never came with a gasket from factory. So if you want a gasket there, you have to have this o-ring there. For the rebuild, go ahead and install the bearing and the C-clip to cage it in. And there's a cage on each side of the bearing. Then install the thrust spacer and then the thrust bearing and make sure it goes in properly inside the dowel pin. And then install the other part of the thrust spacer. And for the thrust collar, make sure you put the front seal on correctly by spreading the gap over top of the collar so that it doesn't bend the seal. Then add some oil under the seal and press in the thrust collar with the seal connected into the front plate. Make sure that the collar spins after you get it pressed all the way in. If it doesn't spin then it's likely that you pinch the seal or it's a possibility that you haven't pushed it all the way in. Then install the oil deflector and the o-ring on to the front seal plate and then install the front seal plate into the bearing housing. I use a pair of needle nose pliers that I ground down the tips to make them really thin so that it works great for these snap rings. So insert that in and make sure that you pry it back to make sure it's fully secure. Next the rear bearing goes in and make sure that you have the cage to retain it from sliding into the bearing housing locked in place. Then install the rear bearing and then put the other cage in to hold the bearing in its place so it doesn't move out towards the turbine wheel. You will need a special pair of pliers to install this clip here so just make sure that you're aware of that. It makes the job a lot easier. Install the rear seal the same way you did the front seal and be sure to add oil under the seal and all around it so that it will have plenty of protection at, on startup. You can use some pre-assembly lube just like I did in this video where you can see it's got the red uh, pre-assembly lube. That stuff is okay to use. It, it's really good for startups and stuff but the thing that I don't like about that pre-assembly lube is that it, uh, if you have a lot of it on there the turbo won't spin freely so it's hard to tell if there's an internal problem with the turbo. When you go to install the shaft, make sure you spin it a couple times and then press it into the bearing housing. Spinning the shaft will help seat the seal before it goes into the bearing housing so that it goes in correctly. Add some Loctite to the shaft so that the compressor nut will stay in its place once it's tightened. If you don't do this, it's still a possibility that it could come off and just keep in mind that the compressor nut is left hand thread to help prevent it from coming off but it can still come off even from the inertia from hitting high boost and then suddenly coming to a much lower RPM it can spin off if it's not tight enough. Then I'm going to show you how to line up the marks for the balancing that we did. This is just the same alignment that we are putting it in as it was on the balancer. You can also mark the shaft, compressor nut, and the compressor wheel before removing it so that you keep the turbo in the original balance in case you don't plan on balancing it. Now we're ready to install the cartridge into the turbine housing and add the clamps. Some people add Loctite to these bolts. In this case I didn't add anything because the guy needs to rotate the housing because my employee forgot to mark that. Luckily the guy is local so I can just go ahead and do that for him when he can clock it and we can get it all settled for him. 
Once those bolts are tightened, we can install the compressor housing onto the bearing housing. We just have to be really careful to make sure that the housing goes on evenly because of the new compressor housing o-ring. When you go to bolt down the compressor housing, you may need to also add some either Loctite or silicone to make sure that you don't have any air leaks between the threads once the bolts are tightened into the housing that holds the housing to the bearing housing. This is kind of a problem with a lot of these kinds of turbos and it seems like not many companies out there do anything about it. But I prefer to not have any leaks on the truck because it really can ruin your fuel mileage. If you have any questions about this or want us to do this rebuild, you can always contact us at TurboLabAmerica at gmail.com. The link for the rebuild kit is in the description box. Good luck with your rebuild.